All right, guys, let's talk about five knives that I will never get rid of. Now, this is really going to be a condensed short list. If you guys know me, you know that I really don't love selling or trading off pretty much any of my knives in my collection because most of the knives that I pursue or go after are knives that I genuinely want. And I think that that's something that I don't know. There's a lot of people that are like knife tubers and stuff and they buy a lot of knives or at least show a lot of knives on their channels and they're usually you know like mid tech you know kind of not bad knives but not great knives and it seems like they have like a revolving door of blades and if that's you and you just like having different knives for the fun of it and you sell off trade off blades that's also a lot of fun too i do very occasionally sell knives and very very occasionally trade them but for the most part most blades in my collection have some reason for being there and so most knives are pretty much there to stay so it's kind of hard to say you know like what are knives that I wouldn't get rid of because honestly like 90% of my collection is knives I probably would never get rid of but if I had to condense it down to five knives ish there's a little bit of a cheat here but if I had to condense it down to essentially five knives these are probably the five that are the highest up on the list it doesn't necessarily make them the most expensive or maybe the best performing blades but they do mean a lot to me so let's jump right into it so first off with number five now there's no real order i really love all these knives quite a bit so yeah the first one up is going to be the xm18 three and a half inch now i do have the three inch version of the hinderer xm18 but this three inch especially this one right here is just tuned so well it flips so nicely for a hinderer and don't get me wrong there are a lot of good hinders but this one is just really really good and also the fact that it has a purple you know g10 scale purple liner it really speaks to me i really love it as many of you know if you've been around the channel you know that i have a special place in my heart for this hinder and so for those reasons even though i have many people in my life even friends that definitely would love and would buy this hinder in a heartbeat i know there are definitely quite a few of you out there um, and people have asked me if i would ever think about selling this, this knife but no I won't um, I really do love it and for me it's like the perfect hinderer out there so that is the XM18 next one up is going to be the Chris Reeve knives large Sebenza 21 now part of the reason why this one is up is because or is on this list is because I actually had a large Sebenza 21 that I sold I missed it so much that I bought this one and while it's not the same as the other one it is still very nice and i really do love it the tonto i don't actually have pretty much any tontos in my collection outside of this one but i just love the way it looks it's done so well and this for me is once again another perfect blade in my opinion that you know there are many sabenzas out there but this one to me is just really really good speaks to me and because it's a Sebenza 21, I do EDC it quite frequently, as you guys can probably see by all the snail trails and stuff. But uh, it is a user, and I do love using it. It fits me very well, and it's an overall fantastic blade. All right, next one up is probably, in the, probably the newest one to this, is the ProTech Auto SNG, or I should say ProTech Strider Auto SNG. Now, I do have a... Now I do have a real pro tenor. Now I do have a real Strider SNG, as you guys can see here, and they are very similar. And the real Strider SNG is amazing. It's probably honestly on my not sell list too. But for me, the Strider or Protect Strider Auto SNG was a blade that I spent years trying to get and these things have literally managed to escape my grasp almost every time i even like literally bought one of these um last november and the dude ended up not being able to send it to me so he refunded me my money so i literally had this in my grasp just to not actually have it in my grasp so it, this is a blade that i tried very hard to track down and don't get me wrong it, i know that the materials used and the overall build quality isn't i mean honestly it is really good and it's just really the materials aren't quite the same or quite as good as strider and of course it's not a legitimate strider but for me i really love the idea of the sng the sng overall like ergonomics i love the really good really predominant 
forward finger choil. It makes it very usable in like many different types of situations. But this whole like uh, setup of the SNG is already a favorite. So having it be a push button auto is the thing that really does it for me. So it's a knife I tried very hard to get for a long time. So that's probably why I would not get rid of it. Uh, anyways, moving up is going to be actually a twofer, and this is kind of the one that uh, both the Griptilian slash Mini Grip, uh, this one in particular is the 556 Mini Grip, but you guys probably already know I also have a 550 full-sized grip as well, and this one wouldn't be or would be one that I wouldn't get rid of because the grip and mini grip are such versatile knives. Even to this day, I really wish Benchmade gave them more love and attention and like upped their steel and, you know, actually like put Magna Cut into this blade as opposed to something like the Narrows. But the mini grip and Griptilian are a hugely versatile and really useful blade shape, blade style, handle, and everything. And so there's really not much honestly like if you're looking for a legitimate just work knife that's no frills that it just can do everything the benchmade griptilian slash mini grip in its different iterations whether it's the 550 the 551 the 553 the 556 555 you know all of the different ones out there there's a lot of different flavors of it but it's a really really solid blade style handle shape and it's just a user and the full-sized 550 was my first real step into the knife world so that's another reason why I wouldn't get rid of my griptilians as a whole all right last one up it almost kind of is sad that there's two bench maids on this list but truthfully speaking uh you know I'm not as large a fan of bench made anymore but they used to be really one of the pioneers and awesome knife companies in the industry but this for me is kind of the uh, golden age knife and when I think of Benchmade in a positive light this is what I think of and this is of course the Benchmade 630 full-sized skirmish now it is huge and it is not something I particularly carry too much anymore because of its large size but this was the first real grail knife for me and what i mean by that is like it was the first knife that i really looked at saw and was like i really want that in my collection someday and when i saw it of course this knife came out in like 2000 the or, or late 2000s early 2010s uh and during that time frame i was obviously just a kid and didn't have the disposable income to be able to afford really nice knives that were like four or five hundred dollars so i wasn't obviously able to get it but it was a knife that I knew that I was going to have in my collection. Now, unfortunately, being the rarity of this knife and the fact that I lived in Alaska, I had never really seen a, um, what is this? Never really saw a 630 skirmish in real life. So when I actually got this one, I was like, holy cow, that is huge. So that's why I don't tend to carry it too much anymore, but it is an honest to goodness, true uh, grail knife for me. And I really, wanted one of these blades and love it and honestly i might have to add a mini skirmish or a 635 is it i think it's 635 um yeah so the bench made at 635 mini skirmish i might have to actually add to the collection so i have a more edc friendly or pocket friendly version but this was my grail and it was important for me to get what i originally wanted so yeah anyways um those are five knives that like i said they usually have a reason pretty much all my knives have a reason for being in the collection and these are probably some of the higher up on that list it doesn't necessarily mean that they're super expensive though these two are you know north of 500 dollars, and most of the time so is this guy but you know whether they're cheap whether they're expensive they have a legitimate reason to have my attention and my love so anyways guys these are five knives i would not get rid of anyways as always guys god bless and i'm out